Before we go any further, you really need to understand what a blockchain is. This is a term which uh, you've probably heard all over the place. Uh, the, the, the word blockchain comes with Bitcoin. Uh, it's pretty much synonymous. So, um, also a lot of people say that blockchain is the underlying technology of Bitcoin, and that's half true. Um, it is the underlying technology for a lot of cryptos, but it's not the, the, the sole thing that makes Bitcoin what it does or um, other uh, forms of crypto. So basically, um, I've got a few different examples of a blockchain and uh, we'll go through each one of them because one may not make sense and some may. Um, but before, in fact, let's, let's talk about the, the yaps. So the yaps are a civilization in Micronesia and for hundreds, or if not thousands of years, they have, um, they've had a, an absolutely fascinating monetary supply. So unlike the rest of the world where we have coined money, uh, like we've had over the last 2,400 years, they have rocks. Not just any types of rocks, they have these huge, massive um, uh, circular stones called rye blocks or rye stones and they tend to have like a, a, a tiny hole in the middle and these rye stones will be littered all over the island there'll, there'll be a whole bunch of uh, rye stones in each village etc and that was their monetary uh, uh, system that was their, their supply and what happened is that people would own a whole stone or parts of a bigger stone and uh, so, for example, let's say that um, my hand was a big rye, rye block in, in, a, in a village, in, um, uh, that, in one of these Yapese villages. Um, and let's say I did a transaction with you. So I bought one of your chickens, <laughs> let's say, uh, or a whole bunch of chickens. So what happens is... Um, we do the transaction, we shake hands, blah, 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 the transaction is done. Um, but what then happens is we then change ownership of, um, of, of that rye stone. So for example, let's say my thumb here was, uh, was my part of um, the, the rye stone. What would then happen is I'll go, right, this, this part of the stone is now yours and your chickens are now mine. Agreed? Yep, we're agreed. And what we would then do is tell the rest of the village. So within a, within a day at least, um, or maximum, sorry, or within a couple of hours, every single person in the whole village would know that, right, uh, you now have this ch chunk of the rye, rye, rye stone and I have your chickens. And that will be it. Um, the transaction is done. Uh, it's completely immutable. So neither of us could um, renege on that deal because everyone has agreed that, right, that, that's the deal. Um, and really, if you wanted to hack this system, um, you would then have to go manipulate at least 51% of the village. Uh, and basically 51% of the village or more would then need to agree that that transaction was invalid. Um, <clears throat> and so that was the world's first operational blockchain. Um, and so, yeah, so no one owns the informa information, no one owns that system. Um, and no one can hack it or manipulate it unless you had a lot of power. Um, so yeah, that, that's absolutely fascinating. And there, there's a really interesting story about um, a really big rye block uh, being transported uh, to the island, um, but it got caught up in a, in a storm. And off the coast of, of the island, um, obviously the ship sunk, it hit a reef or whatnot, and the, the massive rye block was underwater. No one could see it, no one knew exactly where it was, but they knew that it was somewhere off the coast of the island. But what they did was that they carried on using that stone as part of their currency supply or their, their monetary system. So people would be doing transactions and bartering with each other and going, yep, um, I have the quarter of that undersea uh, block, that's now yours, etc." So that's absolutely fascinating, or I find it funny anyway. So that's one way of um, understanding what a blockchain is. Another way of looking at it is um, a football pitch or a five-a-side pitch. So um, I'm not a big football fan, but as a kid, I used to play five-a-side football. And on the pitch, you'd have 10, 10 people, five-a-side. Uh, and let's say the score was nil-nil. But one, one side scored a goal. It was a legitimate goal and everyone 
agreed that the score is now 1-0, apart from one person. Let's say the goalkeeper was really annoyed and went, no, no, it's a, it's a false goal, the guy was offside, yada, 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 the score is still 0-0. Nil, nil. Well, the thing is, every other person on that pitch went, yep, fair play, it's valid goal, the score is 1-0. Every single person has that information. No one owns that information. No one owns, yeah, no, no one owns or controls the, the, the information that the score is 1 0. And what would happen is that that goalkeeper who's trying to disagree with everyone, um, he would then be seen as a bad actor. Now, the one way to look at it is that every single person on the pitch is what's called a node. Uh, and basically, that node, i.e., the goalkeeper, would then be ignored. And uh, yeah, every, everyone else would then start agreeing with each other, etc. So that's another way of looking at a blockchain. And I guess the simplest, most basic way of looking at a blockchain is that it's an online spreadsheet. Simple as that. So it's like an online spreadsheet. No one owns it. No one can influence it or control it. And every single time a transaction is made, that transaction goes onto that spreadsheet. It's then immutable, so no one can retrospectively hack it or manipulate it. Um, and it, then it will just keep on going forever. And every new transaction uh, creates, or well, in real times, a transaction isn't a block. But what you could say, um, every 10 transactions or every 100 transactions equals a block. So a whole block of transactions. And that, that will then be on, on this spreadsheet. And then the next 100 block of transactions will then be another block, etc. So you then have a chain of blocks. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I guess the key thing to remember is that you really can't hack a blockchain uh, unless you uh, either influence 51% of the network or you do something very, very cheeky, which is called ring fencing. Now, this is quite, um, quite advanced, so, so don't worry. But basically, um, there is a way that you could still technically influence um, the, the, the blockchain if you ring fenced a third of the network. So you basically cut out 33.33 oh, 33 recurring. Um, and, and you block all communication with that third. So that's why it's called ring fencing. And then you're left um, with uh, the rest. So you then have uh, um, less of a percentage to, to then manipulate. But anyway, this is going too technical uh, and I really shouldn't have brought it up. So that's what a blockchain is. And uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about cryptos and in general and also Bitcoin. See you in a bit.